Young children are natural mathematicians. They have a spontaneous and sometimes explicit interest in mathematical ideas, and results from research observations tell us that young children spontaneously count, even up to relatively large numbers, and show interest in quantities, how many, or how much. So it makes sense when we notice how math permeates children's spontaneous play. Ginsburg, Lee, and Boyd noticed how young children playing at a block center show persistent interest in comparing heights of different towers, of exploring and creating patterns, shapes, and symmetry. They argue that children are capable of handling mathematics content that is far more complex than typically explored in school settings. And early mathematics is an excellent predictor of student success, a better predictor of student success even than early reading. But, gaps are already established when children come to school. Children from low-income families come to school less equipped in mathematics compared to their higher-income peers. For example, Baruti, Bajwa, and Eland found that the primary cause of problems with basic number combinations in young children is the lack of opportunities to develop number sense during the preschool and early school years. Without active intervention, children with little math knowledge at the beginning of formal schooling will remain low achievers. So, how do we prepare all students in mathematics, not just those who come to school with readiness? And how might we move students from play, through guided inquiry, and back again to support explicit mathematics thinking? Because it's in play that you first see children intuitive, yeah. maybe not articulated understanding of math. And if you're watching carefully, you see a lot of mathematical work implicit in what they're doing as they play. It's in play that after these ideas become more explicit through a lesson, say, they come back to play and you see the play enriched through the ideas that were explored in a more structured kind of way. So I think it's a mutual, ongoing A good place to start is with observing young children while they play. But sometimes we need to know more. One group of teachers conducting a collaborative professional inquiry have noticed that their students are often comfortable counting, but pay less attention to quantity. These teachers are very interested in how children compose and decompose numbers to increase their understanding of quantity. This teacher team decided to engage students in some task-based interviews. Here's a fives frame. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, in this space right here, using these chips, can you Oh, I love chips. <laughs> Show me the same as this. Yep. See? Yeah, use those. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Come on. Do you want to put it in this space right here for me? Two. I can do it right here. Okay. Three. Can you show me the same? Four. Five. Thank you, Jackson. Okay. In this space down here, can you show me more than that many? Yes. Okay, show me more than that many. One, two, three, four, five, okay. six. Use the chips and show me. Okay. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven. Great, thank you. I'll take these ones away. In this space right here, can you show me less than that many? One, two, three, four. So can you show me less than that many dots? I can do four. Can you show me with these less than that many dots? One, two, three, four. 
The teachers determined that students needed more experience understanding quantity and began investigating the use of five frames to compose sets of five using more than one color. And we kind of rethought the monkey lesson and we're trying to think, well, what comes next? Because we kind of left the last meeting kind of all thinking, I think, the same thing. What comes next? Mm -hmm. There needs to be some sort of progression. And Virginia was talking about, like, it can't just be, like, a one-off, like... You want to build, right, mm -hmm. your lessons, and so you're going forward. Yeah. So that's why we wanted to revisit it, but maybe with a slight twist. Mm -hmm. um, so we decided to go look at, at five again making files, but just with tiles, without a context of a literacy context at all. Yeah. Um, with a warm-up with using our hands and revisiting that. Ellie, she showed five all on one hand, but I want to break it up, and I don't want to put five all on one hand, I want to put it on both. So what if I only had one on this finger? How many would I have to put up on this hand to make five? So I've got one, Two, three, four, five. four, five. Okay, so how many fingers do I have up? One, two, three, four, five. Do I have five? Yeah. Is it on two hands? Yep. Yeah. It's on two hands. One's on this hand and some on this hand. Is there another way to make five on two hands? Play with your fingers and let's see. Hmm. So count all your fingers and see if you have five all five. together, but on two this different is a, hands. That's di oh look. So oh, what do you have over here? Come up and show us. This is Jonah. So what's on this hand? Four. And what's on this hand? One. Four and one. Okay. Should we count them all to see if it's five all together? Let's see. One, one, two, three, four, five. Good. So now we have oh, two ways. Oh, we got another way over here, I think, Jane, too. Jane, come on up. Keep your fingers up for us so we can see them. Right, yours is this, right? All right, how many on this end? Two. How many on this end? Three. And let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, my goodness, three different ways to make five so far. Once the students participated in guided exploration for composing five, they moved back to play with some structures borrowed from the guided exploration. Tammy designed a play station called the Five Bakery. Now, purposefully, we placed only two different choices of toppings so that we could, you know, yeah. curve our... Um, and we only gave markers and order books um, that were in those colors, right? So we had, you know, aprons and order books and we talked about like the roles that people would need to play in the bake shop uh, as like sort of like leading up to it. So then you had the person taking the order and then you had cookie makers who were making the cookies. But I found that if I really wanted it to be five bakery and I really wanted them taking the orders and making the cookies like in that sort of fashion, that I had to be there. Especially for some of the kids I had to sort of, you know, pay attention to what was happening so it wasn't like pizza party um, because it was evolving, right? Um, now, this week we changed it because we really wanted to get to the five frame and that was sort of always the plan that we were going to move to the five frames. Mm -hmm. So this year we changed it. We changed the Play-Doh. We put cinnamon like you guys had suggested in your Play-Doh um, so that the entire classroom smelled like a bake mm -hmm. shop. From personal experience, I thought of cinnamon rolls, so I started rolling them and making cinnamon rolls. So the same rolls, but we changed the gems and we had you know, raisins and icing and sort of that idea. And But we ended up like evolving it. We noticed during the lesson that we were having a hard time with that, so we went light and dark that for the topping. So we ended up okay. giving black and yellow crayons uh, or markers. And um, this became a completely independent workstation. So I went from having to sit with them and sort of what Kim came and observed a little bit to them being able to completely do this on their own. This helped organize their thoughts. This was really quick and easy for them to do with their order form. So would you like I would have used five friends from the beginning. Because that, in order for them to be filling up the orders, someone had to be there and be like, oh, where's your order to go with that cookie? Do you know what I mean? Where this became... Do you have five all together? <laughs> or, yeah, that makes where, that number, and you can right? see, like you can see on the papers that they were sticking their cookies to it to make sure they matched. Yeah. 
Which is we can even see that it's counting. I mean, I said five things. Okay. And one red. Two red. Two red. Zero. Zero red. Zero red. Zero red.